Welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm Alex Rudy, and each week you will meet incredible artists from all walks of life. Filmmakers, writers, actors, painters, musicians, and so many more sharing their stories to motivate and inspire the creative in you. Whether you're doing it for fun or looking to make a living, this show will help you on your journey to bring out the artist within and letting the world know that your art matters. Hello, one and all. Welcome to another episode of The Artist Matters. In this episode, you're getting a special treat. This woman I've known for 10 years. Back in 2009, I saw an ad in Craigslist for dinner theater. I've never done that before. Sounds like it could be fun. Why not? So I go to the audition. And that is where I met today's guest, Deborah Louise Ortiz. Or as I know her, Debbie Ortiz. And the show I auditioned for was The Godfather's Meshuggah Wedding. And uh, I read first for the groom. I think I read for one of the uh, mobsters. And then they liked what I did. And I was, as I was leaving, they said, come back. I want you to read for the priest of the show, Father Neil Scalapini. <laughs> and I was cast in the role and was part of this standing ovation dinner theater group for several years and got to know Debbie and her family who helped out in all aspects of the production from DJing to acting to wardrobe, props, makeup. It was uh, quite a delight being part of that show and sharing that experience with them. But there's more to Debbie's tale than dinner theater. She started off wanting to become a movie star in the Bronx and finding her way to a dance troupe in Manhattan, was involved in other productions, including dinner theater. Plus, she even created her own one-woman show. She even found time to start a family and eventually moved her way down here to Florida, where she did create Standing Ovation Dinner Theater. And then she found a new calling as the director and producer of the award-winning documentary, Code 9, Officer Needs Assistance. This documentary sheds light on PTSD in law enforcement officers and first responders. And to this day, it's used as a platform and a tool to bring awareness of the PTSD that affects the law enforcement officers and first responders and their families and is one heck of a film that you must check out. Not too long after, she directed a short film that her son wrote called Silver Alert, which I had the honor of acting in. And there's so much more to get into, so let's not waste a single moment. Let's get into this with a woman I call writer, director, producer, filmmaker, actor, and friend. Here is my interview with Debbie Ortiz. Welcome, Debbie, to the show. Hi, thank you. Oh, thanks for being on. Been wanting to do this for a long time. And (laughs) yes, I'm so glad you're here. You have a lot, she's a lot to share with the audience here. First off, where did your journey begin? I am a native New Yorker, uh, born and raised uh, in the Bronx, and then. Moved to Manhattan to the Upper East Side and spent um, from the age 16 um, all the way up into my cot 40s in Manhattan. And now I live in Florida. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So back in your early days, did you always have this creative spark in you? Yes, I pretty much can't remember a time that I did not want to I I pretty much wanted to be a movie star that's you know I watched all the old movies I spent a lot of time watching TV 
the Fred Astaire, uh, Ginger Rogers, Gene Kelly musicals. I loved the, um, watching the musicals and the dancing, and um, I was taken in. I was just swept away, and that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to be a huge movie star, and I was going to, I don't know how I was going to do that at that age, but I was that, I just wanted to entertain. All right, so you wanted to be a movie star. So yep. how did you channel your creativity with that? Was it dancing, singing, acting, a little bit of everything? Well, I, yeah, I just, I wanted to just, like I said, I was like, you know, dreamt about being a movie star and quite did not know how to get there. Um, I was a teenager, started working, um, was really not interested in the academics of school. Mm. Um, you know, I really wish I had someone to push me a little further academically, but that didn't happen. And so I said, you know, I started working, making my own money, and I decided to go to acting school. And I auditioned over at the Strasbourg studio and um, I started my journey um, into just, you know, testing the waters and absolutely loved the classes and, and still had no idea, you know, what I was going to do. But I took the classes and then started finding out what other actors were doing as far as getting work and found the backstage, you know, newspaper and started auditioning. Um, not very much, but what had happened was a friend of mine who was going to audition for a dance company. <laughs> now, I love to dance. I did, I did classes at Strasbourg for dancing. Um, I was not a professional dancer by like no means like Broadway um, talent, but I love to dance. Absolutely love to dance. Another part of myself that I feel like dance has been a huge tool in helping me heal um, through some of um, the stuff that I dealt with in my childhood. How How so? Well, you know, You know, living in the Bronx, um, my upbringing was a little rough. (laughs) Um, And I think, you know, for me, becoming another person and um, the whole idea of becoming an actress or a movie star was a a way to escape my my life. Mm. And I can become somebody else. And then realize that music and dance was like, you just would like make me forget i always remember the lyrics to um uh some dance to remember some dance to forget Mm -hmm. for me it was some dance to forget and dancing allowed me to do that and so music allowed me to do that and so my friend was going for an audition for a dance company, a local dance company, and I went with her and they asked me to audition and I actually got in and she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I felt really bad about that. Um, I did say to them that I didn't feel comfortable taking the uh, position as one of their dancers without her because it just didn't feel right and they took her in. And so it was a local dance company and we were called the New York Guys and Dolls. And we had a choreographer and we were performing at places like, now mind you, this was in the 70s, okay, late 70s. And uh, we were performing at discos and clubs. We even performed at um, several um, correctional institutions for inmates. Wow. Um, it was quite an experience. <laughs> wow. I didn't know they could book dancers to go to a jail. Interesting. They did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was actually quite a scary experience for us. I could see we that. We locked up the rooms. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. So how long are you with the New York Guys and Dolls? 
I, I want to say a little bit over a year. Um, and I was still going to classes. And the um, and then I fell in love. And mm -hmm. my focus changed quite a bit. And even though I was still going to classes, I left the dance company. And um, now we're talking about, you know, I was still, you know, auditioning and doing stuff uh, from the age of 17 to 20. And then I got married. Um, didn't do much. Um, got married and completely left the creative field. That was it. I got married. I wanted, you know, I had the family. I had my first son and my second son. And I didn't do anything creatively, but the whole time felt that I had to, I needed to, did it again, just didn't know how to get back into it. Mm. Um, I, my husband at that time was not very supportive of that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, what about so, the rest of your family? Were they encouraging? Oh yeah. I mean, my, my mom and dad were, you know, my sisters were, um, but, um, like I said, it's kind of like, I really take on the responsibility for not, you know, pursuing it and saying, this is something that I need to do. Um, I, until later on in my marriage. So life got in the way. Yes. Or I guess in this case, you allowed it to get in the way. Would you say? Yeah, I mean, I wanted mm. it. You mm. know, I knew that I still wanted to pursue it, and I knew that somewhere down the line I would continue to do it. But my, I guess my focus at that time was, you know, having the kids yeah. and, you know, raising, you know, starting to raise them. But the the desire and the passion for it just began to it just continue to grow and grow. Mm. And I, I got to do something because I need it for my own mental stability. Mm. I need cre creativity is what helps me um I, you know I, I i i oh you know what is very helpful alex i'm kind of skipping some stuff okay i was i was suffering with some severe depression uh during my uh years of marriage and i um so i'm i'm taking it back now i was suffering with severe depression I did not know it at the time that that's what was happening to me. And my desire to create became more and more. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had to do something or I was going to lose myself completely. Uh, the depression became so severe that I uh, had to seek help from a doctor. Um, and quite honest, you know, it was, I, w I felt suicidal. Mm -hmm. And um, I did seek out help, thank God. And that doctor really pretty much changed my life and telling me that this wasn't normal the way I was feeling, that there was help and that I could feel better. I practically leaped across the desk and wanted to just kiss this man mm -hmm. and say thank you for letting me know that I can feel better. I was immediately put on antidepressants and started uh, therapy. Um, and once I started feeling better, my desire grew even more so, and I went back into acting classes. No, was it Strasburg again, or was it something? No, no, I actually went to a commercial um, class, you know, to do TV commercials, and I can't remember the name, but I met some really good friends there that are still lifelong friends today. Oh, okay. um, it allowed me to go on auditions for, we did some local stuff. Uh, we got onto the set of the remake of Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, we were extras in that. Um, I made some friends and I, you know, I loved being on the set, but I knew I didn't want to be an extra. Mm, whoever does. <laughs> that was very, and so I started to audition again. Right. And uh, started to get some roles um, on, in theater in New York. Um, uh, I did quite a few plays in, you know, black box theaters in New York. And then um, 